On Monday, millions will gaze at the sky to watch the solar eclipse. Yeah, but even if you don't have those special glasses, there are still ways that you can safely enjoy it. Kick on Eyes Peter Dowd is live at the Griffith Observatory right now with more on how you can prepare. Peter? Hey guys, the first solar eclipse in 38 years is sparking interest in space like never before, especially here at Griffith Observatory. And folks we spoke with say they're ready. That's planet Jupiter. Tonight, the main attraction at Griffith Observatory is Jupiter. But come Monday, the center of attention will be the center of our solar system. It's mystery. Everything coming here is mystery. It will be the first total eclipse seen in the U.S. in nearly 40 years. When the moon passes between the sun and the earth, the sun's light will be blocked from reaching our planet. And the whole thing is under an hour and a half. That's how fast the moon crosses over and the shadow hits. The shadow will streak across 14 states in the U.S. on a path from Oregon to South Carolina. Those not on that 70-mile wide line, including Southern California, will see a partial eclipse. Any city you want to check out, you just click on it. JPL spent a year developing an Internet application called NASA's Eyes, showing what the eclipse will look like from anywhere in the country. When the sun's bright surface is covered for more than two minutes, the only light visible in the sky will be the sun's outer atmosphere ring known as the corona. But before you look up on Monday... The number one rule for safe eclipse viewing is don't improvise. If you don't know, don't chance it. It's not worth it. You really can damage your eyes. And that's why many businesses, including the Rainbow Symphony Company in Reseda, are cashing in on glasses that meet safety standards. Owner Mark Margola says he's already sold tens of millions of them. Most people have never been in proximity uh, to, to an eclipse, so this is, this, is a, this is a big deal. But if you don't have special glasses, there is another way to watch, by looking down. Basically take two pieces of paper or any other cardboard, things like that. You make a pin in a piece of paper, you put the other piece of paper on the ground, and let the sun go through that little pinhole, and you can watch the different phases of the eclipse indirectly on that piece of paper on the ground. The effect may be more dramatic when enclosed in a box. You can have more complex ones with a box where you actually project an image of the sun down into the back of the box and look at it that way. There's even a unique way that Mother Nature can give you a show. In fact, the trees will act as pinhole projectors too. The leaves in the trees, if you go stand next to a tree, you'll see the little crescent shapes all over. And if you decide to wear a welding mask, make sure they have a shade 14 lens. And you can also hold up your phone to the eclipse and look at the video on your screen. But of course, you definitely want to block out the sun. That's the main thing in all this. Make sure your eyes are protected from the sun. Also, something to keep in mind that could do damage to the lens on your camera. So be very careful for how long you actually hold up your phone to the sun. If you do end up using safety glasses, make sure they are certified. Back to you. Good advice, Peter. Thank you so much. Peter Dow reporting live for us tonight. On Monday, our sister station, CBS 2, is the place for total coverage of the total eclipse. It starts with CBS This Morning, then there's live coverage from 9 a.m. to noon, and the CBS Evening News will be live from Carbondale, Illinois, the closest city to the point of the greatest duration of that total eclipse.